Welcome back! Today on Dialed In DIY, we're making a popping, zapping, electro-shocking handheld device out of free parts! As I mentioned in a recent video, I actually signed up for some email coupons which allowed me to get a free electronic fly swatter. I broke that down, showed you what parts were inside, and explained a little bit more how I got that in the video which is linked in the description below. Today I'm picking up right where I left off in that video which is how to go about modifying it to turn it into a handheld shocking device. You really do need to make sure before you're handling this that you have discharged all of the power, otherwise you're in for a hefty little shock out of the main capacitor. These three wires you see coming off the capacitor are what we are working with. They were disconnected from the racket head itself, and we're going to go ahead and strip down the wires so that we can reconnect those to some probes that we're going to make in just a minute. My particular racket had two negative leads connected to the outside mesh of the fly swatter. We're going to hook those together and have them prepared for a later step. Before I get to making the probes themselves, I'm actually going to take this piece of 3 quarter inch PVC, I'm cutting out a short section of it so that I can take a third of it out of the wall. Basically I'm going to have a curved piece of PVC that's just a little over an inch long, and I'm going to flatten that out because I'm going to hook my probes up through this. As you've probably seen in some of my previous videos, if I don't have the part I need, I like to make it myself. And this way is one of my favorite. I take a heat gun and a piece of PVC and heat it until it begins to soften. At this point, merely put it down on a hard surface and use a couple of tools to flatten it out. All you have to do is hold it in place like this until it cools and you'll have a nice flat piece of PVC that will not conduct electricity. That's exactly what I'm after. I want to put a right angle bend on one of the edges of this, so I'm putting it in these little vice grips just right at the edge, reheating it again, and then bending it until I get a perfect angle that I'm after. It's going to end up looking like an L shape, and that's exactly what I want. Now that I have the holder created, I need to go about making the probes that I actually want to use for my shocking device. So I'm going to take a step out of a previous video where I made my own Dremel tool parts. I'm going to take one of these number six machine screws, put the head of the screw into my electric drill, and then just start to gradually file down the end of the screws until they become nice, smooth, kind of tapered off tipped point probes. This is perfect for this project. Now that I have the tongue twister out of the way, I want you to make sure to pay attention to the warning label on the device if you're trying to replicate this, because this is important to note, this is not a toy, and it can be very dangerous. Only proceed if you really know what you're doing and you're comfortable with this kind of electronics. So back to the build. You noted that I did take the piece of PVC and lined it up with the holes in the handle, marked the holes where the screws go through to connect the two halves of the handle, then drilled the holes in the PVC. Once I have it lined up and I check my fit, I can go back and then mark where it overlaps the edge of the handle so I can take a hacksaw and cut that off. In the end, we're going to want this to slide down inside in between the walls of the handle itself. Once cut and sanded, it fits nice. In order to set our probe posts through the PVC, we're going to take a pencil and mark from the outside of the posts where the screws connect the two halves of the handle together. Because I want the probes to be angled towards each other when I'm done, I'm going to start by drilling straight down into the PVC and then slightly tipping the drill to the outside edge. By pre-testing the fit of the probes themselves, you can actually see the angle that I'm going for here. And at first shot, it worked out just the way I'd like it to be. Since everything looks right, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the two pieces of handle fit together with the new assembly in place, then take everything back out. I'm going to go, go ahead and back the screws out of the PVC and put a number six machine nut on each one, and then reinsert the probe into the PVC holder. From this point, the wiring is actually really easy. All you're going to do is take your stripped sections of wires and take the negatives and put them between one of the screw heads and the nut and tighten it down. Then take the positive wire and put it between the other screw head and nut and tighten it down. Now simply set the probe head assembly into the handle again 
and you can go ahead and tweak the screws back and forth a little bit until you get the tips of the probes aligned just the way you like. Make sure to go ahead and put the cap back on the switch before you put the two halves of handle together, and then you put the screws in and you're pretty much ready to try her out. At this point, I do want to make sure to note that there are exposed wires on each side of this, so you want to be very careful as you're testing it. And please recall, only test this on inanimate objects. You can create quite a shock and cause some skin damage or worse, hitting a person with this. I'll mention what this does to skin in just a minute. But for now, I also want to point out that I ran a brand new set of batteries out having a lot of fun shocking things with this without taking any pause. And I overworked the circuitry just a little bit. And now it doesn't spark quite as well as it used to. Just a moment ago on screen, I did mention that this can have a residual charge that is held. When it has this many volts to start with, that's not surprising, so make sure it's discharged. If this hits your skin, it's going to cause some serious muscle contraction, and it will burn the skin. I wasn't able to get a willing participant to take a full charge shock from this, which I wasn't surprised by, but I did get a shock from hitting a residual charge to a finger, and that caused burns as you saw in that picture, so I wanted to make sure to reduce the likelihood of an accidental discharge to the skin. So I got some recycled plastic material that I could cut to the perfect size to cover any exposed wire or space where you might accidentally come into contact with one of the probes or connections without intending to. If I hadn't fried this playing with it too much, I had some other power enhancements I was gonna do, but I'll have to wait till the next time I'm able to get a free zapper to take on some of these new modifications. Thank you for spending some time with me today on Dialed In DIY and watching my video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know with a thumbs up. If you have some feedback for me on the video, please leave it in the comments below. And if you want to see more videos like this or maybe even some other projects that are a bit different, go ahead and click that subscribe button and then check out my playlists because there's going to be plenty more Dialed In DIY to come.